I'd like to welcome you all back to another beautiful episode for an adoption story with my own experience of me connecting with my birth family to creating a beautiful community worldwide for adoptees. It's important to raise this awareness, sit down with other adoptees to hear their stories. And before the story begins, be sure to see the links below on how you can support this beautiful project. Welcome. I am here in the beautiful Southland region of New Zealand, where I am catching up with a good friend of mine, Victoria Rundle. Victoria, who is a dairy farmer here in the south, was born in the city of Severodvinsk, Russia. She was then adopted out from Arkhangelsk at the age of five into her New Zealand family. With me also coming from Arkhangelsk, we've always shared that similarity. This is her story. I remember those big rooms where everybody was sleeping in. I do remember eating in a big room together. I remember sleepwalking. You remember sleepwalking? Yeah. Yeah. I'd get up and the ladies would put me back to bed. And yeah, that was quite embarrassing. But and they would say, Vicar, what are you doing? Go back to bed. <laughs> yeah. Victoria may remember memories from her time inside the orphanage in Severodvinsk. When her parents came over to adopt her, they also got the chance to adopt another child at the same time. So you're born in Severodvinsk mm. and you're placed into the orphanage in Severodvinsk. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you left there at what age? How old were you? I was five. You were five. You weren't the only one adopted? No. No, because when I was adopted, my parents had to see me somewhere else other than the orphanage. Whereas my brother, they were allowed to go see him at the orphanage. Right, yes. So it was a different circumstance. Severodvinsk is a restricted city and isn't open to general visitors. So when Victoria was in her orphanage, her parents had to bring her to Arkhangelsk first before bringing her and her brother Alex to New Zealand. So your childhood here in New Zealand after you were adopted out, you were not from this area here. So now you are down in the south. We're in the South Island right now. This is where you work. This is your life here. Yeah. What was your childhood like? We had a 40 acre lifestyle block. Some cows, chickens, a dog, a pet sheep. Pet sheep. Pet sheep, yep. Yeah. We had um, outdoor like sand pit, a swing set. We had bike, like push bikes. Yeah, just go outside and live the life. And did you feel like, did you feel like you had a pretty an ordinary Kiwi childhood. You, yeah. Did anything feel different being adopted nah. from overseas? Well, at the time, I didn't really think about it. Like, yeah. I was probably didn't think about it much. I was just enjoying life and enjoying growing up and enjoying experiencing new things. Well, us, of course, when we were young, mm. I met you yeah, years ago. Yes, you did. <laughs> and it didn't click until until later on in life. No, well, we didn't, you didn't really think about it, do you? Do you? No. Yeah. Because I remember we've been friends for a while, probably mm. for what, three, four years. So yeah. I've known you for a while yeah. and I've connected so much with your journey and I've followed your journey yeah. along the path. And things have changed a lot yes. since we first met. Yeah. But in the 1990s, we were part of the support group for up north. Yeah. And so I understand the Russian exactly adoptee the Russian adoptee D support group. Yeah. And all of us as children, I understand all of us, we just wanted to connect with each other. And we mm. had that sort of history about us, that thing in common about coming from overseas coming from an orphanage we had yeah. that as children but we yeah. didn't really connect with it so much as children we just yeah. wanted to hang out yeah we <laughs> were just having a good time we're just having a good time yeah and everything felt like a normal kiwi childhood yeah because we didn't think about it much at that no. age like yeah no. you just want to have fun and make friends and enjoy life really victoria has always known she was adopted but it wasn't until later on, after her childhood, that she started to grow more interest about her roots. I didn't really start getting into it until probably my late teens. So I didn't really think I'm, I, like, I knew about it, but I didn't really consider it. I didn't talk about it much. In your late teens, were you starting to sort of connect the dots more? I was beginning to wonder why, what, like, why it happened, what happened. And, and that's when all the questions started to to kind of gather up and um, yeah, try and work out what 
what was going on and why I'm here and why my birth mother was somewhere else and what just everything and why I was adopted to New Zealand and I was yeah all everything started to come together at, like at once and then that's when I talked to my adoptive parents and they tell me things and but they're always so supportive they have been they've been really good and they have like photos they have videos they have documents so they they would show show me and show my brother Alex and tell us and talk to us you know they were very good do you believe that's important for adoptive parents to be supporting their child 100 percent yeah because like if your child has questions and is wanting to know about what life is like in Russia or why they're adopted or anything like that it's good for them to be open about it it plays a big part of your childhood because yes it makes it harder of course if your parents are not so supportive Mm. and I understand their side as well if they're not not as in supportive but if they don't really want to put their foot in the door to wanting to know more information or helping you as a child it's because of course there's a lot of protection the parents may want yeah and they might not want you to get hurt if whatever you might find out later in their life. Yeah. But every parent has a different way of expressing that support. Yeah. Whether it's giving you some names, maybe them saying, look, we can't help you any further. This is all we know, but we hope you can find something one day. Mm. That's a that's a way of support. But every parent is so different with that. Yeah, it is. Everyone's like everyone's different, but um yeah, support is definitely a lot. So during high school, what were your friends like? Did you talk a lot about where you come from? I did tell my friends. They did ask a lot of questions. I didn't tell everybody. I didn't feel the need to tell everybody. Like, you just tell your close friends and that's about it. I would tell people, but I wouldn't tell them straight away. Like, if we got to know them, then I'd be like, oh, da da da, I was born in Russia, I was adopted later on. But you just, straight off the back, you don't say that to people but you like to keep that a lot of it to yourself too yeah it's quite personal for you like for myself as well so you know you don't just go openly well you can't openly talk about it but for me it's a bit more closed a bit closed up about it sometimes and it's a way to protect yourself too yeah otherwise you know if you say too much you sometimes you, question. you get yeah. you get a bit emotional as well of course I, so you start to kind of think about it and then all these emotions come up and memories and it, yeah. It, it's hard like that. It, yeah, it's a very touchy subject sometimes. Of course, it's a sensitive subject to talk yeah. about. And so. you have somebody that's close by that can talk to you about it, mm. then you're most willing to talk more. Yeah. To be a little yeah. bit more open. Yeah. Victoria has always had an interest with dairy farming. After she finished school, she decided this is what she wanted to do as a career. I went to Telford, which is an agricultural like polytechnic, um, and you study agriculture. You learn all the basic stuff about agriculture, like driving tractors, animal health, milking, how to put a fence up, just real basic stuff. So I was there for a year, and then I went and worked on a farm. So. And you've always had an interest in dairy farm? Well, yeah, because because when I went when we were living in Kerry Kerry, we were living on a lifestyle block, and that's what really got me into it. So it was outdoors, it was animals, you know, you had your push bike, you'd go out, go down the road, gravel, gravel road, push with your push bike. Um, you'd have your, God, my Pete Lane was following me down the road. <laughs> Jeez. The dog. <laughs> and you've got a dog now, Sasha. Sasha, yeah. She's she's an old grandma. She's a beautiful dog though. Yeah, she's she's I got her a year after Telford, so She's your one and only. She's my first dog. Yeah. She's a beautiful dog. She's around here. She's around here somewhere, but Oh, she's outside somewhere. She's outside somewhere. Oh, she's probably sleeping. Even though I had met Victoria a few times during my childhood. It wasn't until 2019 when she reached out to me asking if I could help connecting her with her birth family. Well, (laughs) I knew you could help me, so I was very happy. I was like, yes, let's do it. (laughs) So what made you want to reach out for help then? I felt like I was ready to 
to find the answers for what I was looking for, to find my birth family, my mother or my father or whoever I could find. And I just felt it was the right time to do it. And you were I, ready. I was ready and I wanted to know and meet them and yeah, it's just... Now was the time. It was just then and now, I was like, yep, yeah, let's do it. So I was like, well, because you can't get your hopes up. Yeah. Because it could go really bad or it could go really good. So I was sitting in the middle like, like I really hope something's going to happen, but at the other side, like, nothing could happen. So it's... But you were prepared for anything that I would find when you yeah. reached out to me? Yeah. I wasn't prepared, but in my head I knew I had to be prepared, so I had to try and prepare myself somehow. Victoria had only her birth parents' names on her original adoption papers. After I did a search for her, I was able to track down her birth mother. I'll never forget the day that I told her the news. I was, yeah, I was so happy because I didn't know how to react and I didn't know what to say, and, but I was over the moon about it, so. And when did we go to Russia? How soon? Like, a few days later. <laughs> It was very soon. Vicar, we're going to Russia in three days. You said, it didn't, it didn't click first. No, I remember you, it didn't. I remember you saying, you just said, yeah, okay. And then, said, and then you asked me again. Yeah, that's right. And I said, yeah, three days. And you said, what? What? <laughs> three days? Now, I remember there was a moment where you said, why did she not come back for me? Why did she not come back to the orphanage? And as an adoptee, were you sort of, you're questioning that, of course. Yes, because at the time, I didn't know that once a mother gives up her child for adoption in Russia, that she's not allowed to, she's not legally allowed to see that person or child anymore. Yeah. So. So she lost rights to you. She lo Yeah, she lost the rights and I didn't know that. So that's why I was like, well, why didn't she come see me? Um, why hasn't she tried to find me? Why, well, just why everything really like yeah why would your mother give you up just just like that and it really hurt me deep down um yeah it would be it would have been hard but then she told me and now i understand and so i forgive her for that but it's so good you have those questions though yeah you know because you just want to know what's happened all those years ago yes and you put yourself in her shoes and you realize that she just couldn't get you back. No. Even though she, she, of she, she probably tried because she was only living, I don't know, half an hour down the road. Yeah. And knowing that, that still hurts me to this day, but the fact that she can't, she wasn't allowed. Yeah. I have to, I accept that because it's like, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real difficult of course. Emotion to process, but you have to kind of accept it and go, okay, well, she couldn't, she wasn't allowed, and I'm here now, and I know why, so it's you have to move forward. Well, it's the same with my birth mother. She lost rights to me. But mm. It was her choice because she couldn't look after me. Yeah. And then she lost rights to me, and in some ways, I, and she regrets to this day about yeah. that, about letting me go. Because every time I talk to my birth mother, She's like, I'm sorry, please forgive me, you know. I, she's so apologetic about it. She, just, yeah. she says, please forgive me every time. Like, I, I, and I say, I forgive you. Like, we, you know, it's, we, it's happened. You can't let's, do anything about it. Let's focus on the now. Let's focus on the now and get to yeah. know each other. But she just keeps saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Like, she just, she has that guilt inside of her. And I'm just, I don't know what to say to her. Like, I say, I forgive you. Just. I understand, what else can I do? <laughs> I feel her emotion, but it's it's hard to say. I don't know what to say to her sometimes. It'll take time though, Vicar. So, they'll, take, they'll take time. Mm. They'll take time to build that, you know, to, for yeah. her to understand completely, and that's completely fine. It's completely understandable. Yeah, and it's hard because the translation. Yeah. Well, I don't speak fluent Russian where she does, and the translation can get lost in it. Sometimes she's probably saying something else and I'm trying to say something else to her and it's yeah, the, the, the translation is quite hard. So I understand with her side, she had, she had probably been through a lot. 
you yes. know, through her life and yeah, losing you. Yeah. And so that wouldn't have been easy at no. all. And then when you connected with her, she's probably just saying, please, Vicar, please forgive me. Yeah. No matter what, I just want to emphasize this to you a thousand times. And I know you say, I forgive you, I forgive you. Yeah. But to her and herself, she was probably just always wanting to repeat that to you to just let you know yeah. how she was feeling. Well, she says, she says, um, she said that she's been alone for so long and that, you know, now that she's not alone because I'm here with, like, she, I'm back in her life and um, I just say to her, like, I'm here for you, always be here for you no matter what. But then she's got her partner too, like, you know, she's not completely by herself. So. But she would have felt that missing piece from you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because when she lost my sister, yeah, that really hit her hard. And she would have felt more. She would have felt more alone because she lost my sister, yeah, and I wasn't around. So, yeah, that's right. It's probably why she felt, and she she said that she was quite depressed. So you know, it's she's open with you about that. She's very open. She tells yeah. me everything and everything, like. Like I say, the translation can get lost sometimes, but I understand what she's saying and yeah. I, I reply as much as I can. And Of course. For Victoria, hearing the news on her birth mother was just the beginning, but the day that she actually got to meet her birth mother all the way in Russia was even more special for her. That was such a nerve-wracking day. I was like, oh my God, I don't want to look at her. <laughs> Cold morning in Arkhangels. It was freezing. And I remember that morning, we, so we got to Russia, we walked down the pathway. And yeah. You remember that time when I said, hey, Vicar, go Yeah, she was sitting on the bench up in front of me and she was staring at me the whole time. <laughs> and she had her arms like wide open and she was like, Victoria, Victoria. <laughs> and then she started crying immediately and I started crying and yeah, that's just when all the emotions flooded in and happened and everything was just magical. <laughs> what did you ask her first? I was crying. So I remember the crying and then I, d I don't, I don't remember. Hello. Hi. How are you? <laughs> yeah. Good <hi>. morning. <laughs> All sorts of, hey, how's life? How's things? <laughs> Good to catch up again. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I said to my birth mother. I said, really? Hi, how are you? How's life? How's work? Oh. Because when you're put on the spot, yeah. you may have a list of questions. And I know you had written down questions. Yes, I did. But yeah. when you're in the hot seat or at that moment, mm. you wipe the questions away and you go. Your mind just goes blank. Yeah, your mind just goes. Yeah. And that's exactly how I was feeling. And the only thing I could think of was like, uh, oh, hello. I remember you asking, how do you say, how are you? And yeah. you're so emotional. And yeah. you just wanted to say, how are you? And she's like, I'm good. But then it, it let her just express how she was feeling because that's what she did. She expressed and just let everything out mm. right there because she's been probably been wanting to say that all her life. And she said it as soon as she met you. Yeah. When you meet your birth mother, I know that she let out so many emotions and mm. she just wanted to express everything to you as much as she could and mm. as soon as she could. Yeah. But I know on your mind at the same time, you would have been going through so many emotions equally at the same yeah. time. Yeah, both of us would have just been a wrecking ball, really. <laughs> a wrecking ball. <laughs> like many of us adoptees who may want to search for birth family, we know that with so many emotions come so many questions. For Victoria, this was important to her. What <laughs> questions did you have for your birth mother? I remember asking her why she had put me in an orphanage, why it all happened the way it did, and why she hasn't reached out to me or tried to see me or, you know, it, those were the main questions. I felt neglected, like I felt like I was brought into this world and my own mother doesn't want to even know me or meet me or see me or talk to me. Yeah. And I felt very neglected for that. And yeah, it, that those were the main questions I wanted to know for closure. Of course. And understand what happened, the, the way that it happened and why she disappeared from my life, really. You just wanted to paint that picture of exactly what happened. Mm, yeah. You, you wanted to know. I wanted to know why she wasn't in my life, why yeah. she wasn't around, like where, where did she go? Did she not want to be 
my mother. Did she not want to sit, like know me? So. Yeah. Well, it's good that you asked those questions though, because yeah. did you get them answered mm. the way you wanted them to be? I did. I still ask her brief questions here and there. Not so in depth, but I do ask around that sort of topic. Yeah. Just because every, like, every so often a question will pop up and I just I message her and I ask her and she'll answer. She, yeah. she always answers very openly. It's good that your birth mother is so open with you now. Yeah, she, she, yeah. she, she has nothing to hide. She always tells me yeah. anything that I want to know, anything extra that she feels that I need to know. And yeah, she's just, she's so good like that. <laughs> and you've kept in touch with her to this day. Yes. Kept up to date. Yes, I I tell her what's going on in my life, what I'm doing. Um, I ask her what's happening in her life, what's happening with her, if she's working, if she's on vacation. Like, yeah, just. Does she send you photos of vacation photos and? Sometimes. <laughs> I know Pasha does. Yeah, Pasha. Her partner. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good sort that one. He's a really nice guy. <laughs> yeah. So you had questions about your birth father to your birth mother. Now I understand that you know where he is, but your birth mother has said just about, you know, safety wise with yeah. going to track him down. Now's not the time to do that. No, no, my birth mother knows the whereabouts of him roughly, but she recommends not to go and find him or see him and talk to him, which is quite sad, really. Like I'd like to meet him and talk to him. Same as my birth mother and have questions, but yeah. it's it doesn't sound like an ideal situation, to be honest. Down the line, you know, you might want to go with some close friends or family and maybe see what happens down in the future. Yeah, that is a possibility. Like, he's my father and I do have, I'd like to, exactly the same as my birth mother. I'd like to be in his life, get to know him, ask questions. Of course. And just see who he is as a person, really. And as my birth mother has said, like, he doesn't sound like a very nice man, but it's, he's my father. Like, it's, it's he's a part of me. He's, he's a part of you, yeah. He's, yeah, it's, they'll take what can you do? Like, you know. They'll take, they'll take time though. And he is part of your life. He is part of you. Yes. So, down the line, you might want to make a decision about reconnecting with him. Yeah. You know whereabouts where he lives, but obviously take small steps with that. I could I could go to all the effort, mm. but he may say, no, you know, I don't want to. And you, I don't want to meet her. I don't want to see you. Then I'll just have to go, okay, well, what can I do now? Well, you can say you've tried. I have, yeah, true. You, you would have tried everything you can. Yes. Because a lot of us adoptees mm. are afraid of afraid of that. Afraid of the rejection. Rejection, of, yeah. yeah. It's a big thing with us. It is. And it sucks. Yeah. Because we want to go searching for someone and knocking on doors and trying to find the evidence and the links. And then all of a sudden somebody goes, I don't want anything to do with you. Yeah. It knocks you back. Yeah. It almost puts you off knowing anything about any part of your birth family. Mm. And a lot of us, we take a little while to build that resilience back. Yeah, that yeah, may... because it brings up emotions in, inside of you. You know, your, your emotions, your, the memories that you have when you were in Russia. Yeah. You may remember something when you were with your parents then, but I don't know, I don't remember anything. I just remember the orphanage, so. It's the only memory that I have. But now you've built that connection over time. Yeah. You've tracked down your birth mother. Yeah. You've had those little pieces of memory from the orphanage. Yes. And you've had a great childhood here. Yeah. You've got parents that love and support you. Yeah. And now you're just trying to continue the journey further on mm. to find more pieces. But some of those are going to be setbacks. There's going to be roadblocks. There's going to be challenges. You know, with your birth father, that may be very difficult. That may be a, a massive hurdle to climb. Yeah. I think it will be, to be honest. I feel like it will be. We know as adoptees, we simply want to connect, to learn about the lives of our birth families while they learn about ours. Though as Victoria is still yet to meet her birth father, the connection with her birth mother holds a strong and important bond. She's, 
She is a very good woman. She's a very similar personality to you. <laughs> so I've been told. <laughs> I see it. The same smile, the same little yeah. cheekiness, you know. It's in both of you. It's in both of you. Yeah. Like when I met her, I spent a little bit of time with her, but I haven't spent that much time with her to know her really that well. So obviously you'd love to go back, spend mm. a nice amount of time with your birth mother and her family. Yes. How long would you spend? Oh, I don't know. Probably at least a month. A month? Nice. I don't know. To connect with her more. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'd have to learn. I mean, I know Russian, but I need to learn more Russian. Pick up more of that and then... I reckon once you're over there, you'd pick up the language a lot better. You'll be, you'll be immersed around it. Yeah. So your birth mother say, might say, sit down, Vicar. I'm going to teach you some Russian right now. <laughs> Before you stay another four weeks here. <laughs> she always asks, how is your Russian? Uh, getting there. <laughs> okay, okay. Say, <laughs> 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 That'll take your own time, but that's another that's another part of you that you can do later on. You can learn small steps with yes. the Russian language. Yeah. Connect with that as part of your culture, it's part of your blood, it's yeah. part of you. Of course, your birth mother wants you to learn because of the la the language barrier. Yeah, well, because she... She doesn't really have any interest in learning English. Well, for an older person, it is harder for them. Yeah. And do you feel like things have changed dramatically from, you know, your teenage years, your childhood years? What's it like now after knowing more about your birth family as an adult? I like it. It's, 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 it's a weird feeling sometimes because you're like, yes, I have this life in New Zealand, but then also have kind of a life somewhere else as well. And it's kind of, it's cool. But it's hard to imagine as well. Like, you don't know. I mean, you've obviously been back and you know what life is like over there. But I, I haven't gone back yet. So well, I've seen a very small, tiny bit of it. Yeah. So I can kind of imagine what it would be like. But it's, yeah, it's hard. But for you, yeah. you you've had like this first hurdle that you've jumped over yes you've made that first connection so the first time it's always going to be that moment is when you take everything in yeah you're looking around the second time you start there's to get, so much to take in exactly there's and, just and you will start to get familiar the more you go back and yeah. visit and you start to connect more things yeah. will just take time with that it doesn't happen in a day no it doesn't when you go back the first time you're taking in the culture you're taking in the language you're taking in the connections that you've just made mm. with your biological family later yeah. on you start to build that over time now you've been in touch with your birth mother for coming up three years three years yeah and all those connections they continue to grow mm. and when you go back you'll start to connect more with the the town where you're from mm. you'll start to get familiar with places the language you'll start to pick up on. You'll start to learn more about your own family history, your background, your family history in Russia. All of that stuff is so important. Yeah, because my birth mother said that I have family in several events. Yeah. Cousins, aunties or uncles or something like that. So there's definitely family around the place that I still have yet to meet. And family in Ukraine as well. In, in Ukraine. Who's, uh, who's in Ukraine, do you know? Aunties and uncles, I think. It's, big it's all over the place. It's, yeah, it's... <laughs> It's like, wow, so many people to meet. But, you know, at first I just want to get my relationship going with my birth mother and my grandma that's living with my birth mother and, my, and her partner. You know, the, the ones that are right there, there and then. Yeah. And then the extended family can be later on. So. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be holding out waiting for you to come and visit. Yeah, well, <laughs> my Russian Vicar, needs to improve Vicar. her first. Vicar, Vicar, where are you? Come on over, come on over. <laughs> When do you think you'll go back? Next year. Okay. Sounds like a plan, yeah? I said that three years ago. <laughs> so I know you'll definitely go back. Yeah. And you are building yourself up to prepare yourself to go back. Yes. And your birth mother's probably waiting. She's, where are you, Vicka? Where yeah, are she's you? Yeah, she's always asking, when are you coming to Russia? You said that you were coming to Russia. You know, she's, she's asking. So I'm like, yes, I know I'm getting there. Getting there soon. <laughs> Victoria is hoping to go back to visit her birth mother when the situation overseas is suitable. She also hopes to visit her extended family in Ukraine and all across Russia. For others who may want to connect with birth family, like most of us adoptees, Victoria has always understood that things always take time.
What advice do you have for other adoptees who may be wanting to search for birth family, whether it's from Russia or domestic or international other countries? What advice do you have for them? Push past your fears and just do it. Because if you don't do it now, then it may be too late later on. Like, there's no time like the present, really. You just got to do it. That's all I say. Because a lot of adoptees do struggle to find anything. Yes. And that puts a lot of adoptees back. Yeah. You know, it makes them afraid of going any further. Yeah. Or wanting to connect. There are a lot of adoptees that may do a search. Mm. And because they're excited to do one, they've got some information, but they can never find anything. And a lot of them push back and they just go, okay, I don't want anything to do with this country anymore. Or if it's in the same domestic mm. adoption, I don't want anything to do with this family if I can't find them. What advice do you have for a lot of adoptees that are really taking that time to cope with that? It can be hard. Like you really want to find something, but there's nothing there. So connect with your closer family that you have with you in New Zealand or wherever you are. Talk to them, tell them how you feel, what's going on, and just really, yeah, just be open. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. Exactly. Yeah. Don't give up hope. There might be some like there might be something on later on that you might be able to find. You yeah. know, maybe keep searching some someplace else. Yeah. Maybe in the place that you're looking is not the right place. Maybe look. Talk if you know of anybody that's going to help you maybe help you somewhere else talk to them find different ways of yeah. searching if you want to search yeah find a path that you'd like to go on yes but understand that the path can always it will always continue yeah there's always different different ways of find finding people looking elsewhere you know that one place that you're looking might not be the right place that you're looking so but also with that with searching a lot of adoptees may not want to search at all. They might not want anything to do with the birth family. And I completely respect that. Yeah. And their shoes as well. So I say for them, you know, as I say all the time, try and have someone close to you, learn about the culture a little bit. Yeah. You might, do want, you might want to revisit the country of where you're from or go to an area where if you're adopted domestically, there's different ways of coping with that chapter if you're yes. trying to open up a new chapter. Yeah. So birth family can come later at any time for anyone's journey. Yeah. And when you're ready to search, you'll know that you feel like you're ready. Like for yourself, mm. you felt like you were ready. Yes. So. Yeah. Within yourself, you know, right, I want to know this information. I want to get these questions that I have inside of me answered. And you, you just go for it. Like you just, you just don't stop. until just you get, stop. You just don't stop until you get the answers. Absolutely. So. We all have a different journey to go on. While Victoria's connection with her birth family is important, she'll always have the support and love from her family in New Zealand. Our journeys all take different steps each at a time. And with Victoria, with her still beginning, she wants to now focus on her plans for the future. So Victoria, what is next for you? Spend some time with my birth mother, get to know her, with her family, explore Russia, and... See more. See more, yeah. Learn more about your family. Learn more about the Russian culture as well. Learn about those other extended family members down the line too. Yeah. Once I'm in Sivarovinsk with my birth mother, I can go meet some other family members. Go around, have a look. Yeah. And hopefully down the line when, you know, things change, mm. when things get better, hopefully you can go to Ukraine, track down some family there. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. And then when the time is right and... You know, when you have close friends and support, you might want to take that chance with your birth father. But that is in your own time. Yeah. And never push yourself. Ne don't let anybody push you with that. But of course, with your birth father, that connection with him, mm. take your own time. And when that's ready, when that's right, and when that's right, you might want to take that lead. But take yeah, your time. Yeah, I'll keep talking to my birth mother about it. Because she knows that I, I have asked questions about him and she knows that I'm interested. But... She recommends me not to do so, but I'm going to keep talking to her about Understand. it and just say, look, like he's my father and, you know, I want to know. And that would mean the world to you too. Yeah, it would. Yeah. It would, like I said with my birth mother, it would complete me, but, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's a part of me, so I want to know. Of course, of course. Yeah. Thank you, Victoria, for sitting down with me and sharing your journey and 
sharing your story. I know it is a long story. It goes up and down and you've, yeah. had, you've made some connections and yeah. you've had a reunion with your birth mother and there's more to that story for yourself and it's going to continue. So mm. thank you so much for sharing it never with ends. Me. Never ends. No. <laughs> never ends. We all follow our own paths. No path is the same. What you do on that path and how you want to follow it is always up to you. And then we'll get a selfie with the... Let's get a selfie with the cows. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you all so much for watching this beautiful episode. I'm a one-man band with this project. I'm all by myself with this, and it means the world to me to be sharing these stories, connecting with more adoptees all across the world. I hope you don't mind my editing, my camera work, all of that all put together. It's beautiful. I love sharing this, and I love to express these stories for all of you to watch. Thank you all so much. Look after yourselves, and look out for each other. Spasiba.